hi guys uh, good evening can you all see me and hear me so in uh, dnb do you still get oskis or or was this just a covid thing like uh, what is the current pattern for the dnb exams uh, they are just round the corner right so you have oskis right so uh, so this is my attempt uh, I, I looked at a few model papers which were there and, you know, uh, some recall papers which were there and I've uh, made something of a of a model OSCE and uh, let me know how it uh, works, right? Uh, because this is also something very new for me when we used to give, I, I have given DNB as well after my MD. So uh, we did not have OSCEs. We had, but, but that was again uh, pre-COVID era. So we uh, we had like conventional MD exam wherein we had spotters uh, that we would go across the room and see. And then we had... Uh, case discussion long case and short case so that is how it was but apparently now you have oskis and then you have case discussion as well right so so what i was thinking that going forward uh, let's do this as a weekly exercise wherein we'll have one case discussion every week one short case one long case or maybe two each uh, you guys can volunteer describe and have a viva and then we'll have one of oski because with oski you also cover the spotters in a way right so i like the oski pattern wherein you can assess uh, you know uh, not just the diagnosis but a few questions here and there so uh, uh, how does that sound let's discuss after we are done with this um, now a few of you can volunteer and raise your hand if you want to attempt uh, especially the ones who are exam going it'll be like a great practice for you so look at the question and or before the question you know rather than uh, after showing you the question you want to attempt ideally uh, i would want that before the class i have uh, at least two volunteers who can take us through the oskis you know so that is something that would be great. But because it's the first time, let me just show you how uh, it works. And then if you want to volunteer, you can volunteer and raise your hand. Or if you want to just type in the chat, that's also completely fine, right? So that's how uh, we'll do the first one. But going forward, let's plan it like uh, it's your actual exam and we can discuss it, how you will answer. Okay, so I have 15 OSCEs today, which will be uh, an image. Uh, and then we will have questions related to it. And the OSCEs include both, you know, theory stuff, uh, table viva stuff, and then cases as well. So that's what I have tried and included. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is the first uh, OSCE for you. Uh, there are five questions in this. Uh, they don't really specify the marking here. So there's no marking, but yeah, I would want to discuss all five. So let's take it one by one. All of you see the image. And uh, tell me the first answer. What do you think is the type of injury here? So I here I want you all to answer. Only then I will move forward in the chat. Even if you don't want to answer, like raise your hand and speak out, you can just answer. Two marks each question. All right. Okay, fine. Not every question will have, uh, not every OSCE will have five questions in, in my OSCE. And in the uh, other OSCE, like sample OSCEs also, I didn't find five each, but okay. Right. So we have the first answer and, and that is, uh, yeah, most of you saying uh, bladder injury. So this is indeed a bladder injury. It's not urethral injury. You can see that this is a conventional cystography right so this is a conventional cystography wherein you see that x-rays in the background and you see that the contrast is perivesical it is not going anywhere else it is in the perivesical space and that suggests that the first answer indeed is your ideal answer in the exam should be that it's an extra peritoneal type of bladder rupture second question for you what is the usual spread or usual pattern of spread of contrast in this injury. So I have kind of answered it for you. So this is extra peritoneal. So the pattern will be in the pre-vesical space of redsius, right? That's what it's called, which we will see on the CT scan and in the peri vesicular space and what is this pattern called can somebody tell me a few names a few signs which we call to describe this perivesicular space yes so we call it as molar tooth 
sign or we also call it as a flame sign isn't it so it looks like a flame or it looks like a molar tooth so this is how you uh, an, an ideal answer would look like so you'll mention the spaces you'll mention the signs obviously i'm just writing the bullet points it's better always in any exam whether it's theory or it's oski that you write in bullet points because then the examiner knows that you have clarity of thought obviously when you don't know the answer then you write prose poems whatever you want but when you know the answer do go, uh, go bullet point wise right so that is what is always ideal what is the investigation of choice correct it is ct cystography ct cystography is the investigation of choice for evaluation of bladder trauma what is the ideal protocol for the study so what is the ideal protocol for ct cystography so first step that you would have to do the patient will need to have a foley's right so here you would need a foley's catheter what would you do here how much contrast i just want you to tell me kitna contrast dalte hain <coughs> How many ml of contrast do you inject? And uh, definitely it's diluted contrast. What is the contrast that you prefer? 40 ml? No, that's too less. MCU mein kitna contrast dalte hain? 400 you meant? 400 we put, right? MCU also, we will not have the bladder voiding sensation. So here also we put around 350 to 400 ml, all right? So after you have put the Foley's catheter, you are going to put around 350 to 400 ml of diluted contrast. So the contrast that we tend to prefer is urographin. What type of contrast is urographin? It is diatrazoate. So diatrazoate is, yes, there is a telegram group, Ashu. Uh, it's called conceptual radiology only, I think. Yeah, search conceptual radiology. So urographin is non, what is urographin? What kind of a contrast is it? Yeah, it's non-ionic monomer, right? So it's, uh, no, it's ionic monomer, right? So it's not, it's ionic monomer contrast it's the oldest contrast that we have that's why we don't really use it as iv but we only use it for intravesicular insertion in rg and mcu we tend to use urographin very commonly so you dilute it with a uh, normal saline and what do you do next that's it do you remove the foley's or you don't remove the foley's in trauma setting we are in trauma setting remember i'm not doing an mcu here it's just a ct cystography Somebody says something. You remember. So if somebody says something, you please type. Okay, I won't be able to hear. So, what do you do? Do you remove foley's, guys? No, we don't remove the foley's. Remember that. Tushar, you got to mute yourself. Yeah. So, we do not remove the foley's. We clamp the foley's after this, all right, so that the contrast does not drain out. So you have to clamp the foley's. That's important. And then what do you do? You take a CT scan. So the CT scan that you plan for the cystography. So you've already done a venous phase CCT abdomen or torso already. So you don't want to scan the complete thing. You now just take a limited CT scan from the diaphragms, right? So you plan a limited abdominal CT from the diaphragm till the pubic symphysis. So this is what we have to do for a CT cystography. Is this clear everyone? Yeah. And what is the management for this type of a bladder rupture? I think that somebody Pratik already answered. That's correct. Here it's a conservative management. What you have to do is you just keep the patient on Foley's catheter for a long term and, and this will eventually seal. So let's discuss uh, bladder trauma. You know, let's just finish this topic now that we are discussing so these are two uh, or four images of ct cystographies look at the first two images and tell me uh, uh, whether it's intraperitoneal or extraperitoneal bladder rupture so you can see how the contrast is extravasating along the extraperitoneal space this is extraperitoneal bladder rupture it's in the prevesicular space of regius all right this is what we mean by the prevesicular space of regius this is an example of extraperitoneal bladder 
rupture all right on the other hand so this is extra peritoneal on the other hand when it is intra peritoneal you will see interloop fluid look at these images now you can see it going into the peritoneal space you can see how it's extending superiorly right and where is usually the defect when you have an intra peritoneal bladder rupture the site of defect is usually the dome of the bladder can you see this so it's usually when the bladder is very distended when the accident happens remember how they say don't drink and drive they don't just mean alcohol they mean anything don't drink and drive anything because if your bladder is distended and you have a trauma it's going to be ipbr which is the more dangerous type of bladder rupture okay so this is the dome of the bladder that rupture so in in over distended bladder traumas it's going to be ipbr more common is in 80% of the cases, it's extraperitoneal. In around 20% cases, it's going to be intraperitoneal bladder rupture. Extraperitoneal is something which is going to have conservative management. So, what is more common usually has better prognosis, right? So, this conservative, whereas intraperitoneal will require surgery. Okay, so this is what you need to know about both of these. Fine, so this is clear. Let's look at the next.